Today we are headed up to see Doc Jen Fit up in Los Angeles and learn all about breathing and mobility. I'm super excited for this. It's something that I do not focus on enough. So I'm excited to implement a few of the things that she's going to show us today. I had my Organifi Gold this morning and it's perfect for on the road and on the go nutrition. So let's go with Proof and see Doc Jen Fit. Welcome to Proof where it's not what you hear, it's what you see. Hi, I'm Viviana and I'm on a mission to meet the most influential and talented leaders in the fitness industry. I'm going to dive deep, obtaining the best information they have, testing it myself, and then sharing it with you. There's so much information to learn and I can't do it alone. I'm Anders. For the last 21 years, I've dedicated my life to helping people live a stronger, healthier life. This journey has led me from strength coach to gym owner, and now the host of Barbell Shrug. We are bringing you inside the greatest minds in health and fitness. No more listening and reading. We want to show you. We want proof. Welcome to Proof. I am Viviani here with Doc Jen Fit and of course Anders Barner. We are here in Los Angeles talking all things mobility, talking about her program, The Mobility Method, why it's so important, why are not more people doing it when it's so uh, important to our everyday activities, whether you're hitting the gym every day, you're sitting in an office, whether you're in a car, no matter what, it's something we all need to be doing. So we're excited to be here with her today and hear all about it. So thank tell you. us a little bit about your background, where you got your start and all of that. Yeah, well thank you for having me here. Of Appreciate course. it. <laughs> Always love to see this guy. Right. <laughs> um, so, Really, for me, I became a physical therapist because I've always been so interested in being active. The movement for me always came easy, but I still was so interested in the why of things. I coached gymnastics after, I taught Pilates after, and I'd be like, why am I taping an ankle? And, you know, why am I modifying movement for this Pilates person? Like, what is happening that I'm not seeing or that I can't help with? And so I started working at a, at a physical therapy clinic, and that's when it was like I was obsessed. I loved watching how they were watching someone move, yeah. and I'm like, what are they looking at? <laughs> what are they feeling? Yeah. Like I just wanted to know all the things. So yeah. it just kept me in the in the reason of why, why, why. And everyone has this mobility foundation that we really need to go back into, yeah. and you know, and we especially in like the U.S. in our modern culture, we go from sucking toes at five months old and sitting on in like crisscross applesauce when you're young to all of a sudden just sitting in desks and sitting yeah, yeah. in chairs and sitting at couches and sitting at dinners and all these other things where we're just sitting and we stand, but we're hardly getting down to the floor. And then we're expecting to go do a heavy workout and right. that's gonna be okay that I'm loading my right. body and squatting all the way to the ground right. where my body doesn't have that mobility. Yeah. Or even going into a plank and your wrist doesn't have that mobility. Yes, yeah. yeah. Like that. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even get into the mobility piece yes. until we get people learning how to breathe properly. Yes, that's like everything. And that's where I tell people to start from in the program too. It's not even like a full comprehensive thing about the breath, but it's really just an idea of how how to start to get back into the diaphragm in a better way and get out of that chest because there's so much that can overlap just from there. Yeah. And I tell people, this is an example that I use all the time, is when you breathing out of your chest all the time, you're telling your brain you're in this constant state of like anxiety yeah. and yeah. tension. Okay. And like if someone scares you and you go like this, like everything gets tight and you breathe into your chest. But imagine you're telling your brain you're doing that Time. Yeah. yeah. Like, of course, you're gonna have stiffness. It's yeah. the person who's like, oh, I stretch my hands, putting hamstrings every day, and they're, I'm never gonna be able to touch my toes. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, are you breathing? Yeah. Why are you breathing? <laughs> yeah. Because there's so much. So often, we're not going into those positions. Yeah. And we're not even able to get there because we're in that stressful state. Okay? Right. Right. So I usually have them lay down and put their hands on their low rib cage and their belly. So it's yeah. belly and low rib cage, and you can even give yourself some feedback that way. So if you breathe out, I say kind of squeeze your rib cage a little bit, just a tiny bit at the end of your breath, and then breathe in and see if you can expand into your hands that way. So the hands should expand laterally and front, and you should honestly back into the bed as well. Yeah. So it should be this 360 pattern, not just this out, out in. Yeah, yeah, exactly, or not coming from the top. So that's typically where I start people with. and. 
teaching them how to start to breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth with really like slow pursed lips. It just helps to retrain yeah. the diaphragm. When we get out of that high stressful state and we're not so locked up and on guard all the time, you automatically have this sense of release. You automatically have this increased range of motion, this increased ability to go into these new ranges that so your body is So it's not just my hamstrings. <laughs> really not just your hamstrings. <laughs> It's not something that like we could just do it a few times, three sets of ten, and be done. Yeah. Something that we get to add into our life on a on a full basis, and which is why I gave the mobility method away as a lifetime program. program like, because yeah. this is something that it's not going to be gone in twelve weeks. You're yeah. not going to be miraculously mobile, and yeah. nothing else is going to pop up in life. Yeah. Life happens. Yeah. We're going to have different jobs. Yeah. We're going to have different hobbies. We're going to have different strains in life that like. Is going to take you in different places. So always being able to come back to something that you can self-assess yeah. and rely on is huge. Yeah. That's the key between mobility and flexibility. Flexibility, you're going to sit in it passively. It's going to feel good, lovely. Yeah. But then you come right out of it, and it's not actually carrying you forward into right. anything. Yeah. Your body craves safety. It craves understanding what it means to get into that new range. So unless you actively are able to put it there, you're not going to be yeah. able to come back there and yeah. it's not going to feel safe. So yes, I can stretch my hamstring, but unless I can actively lift it and contract it at that end range of motion, I might pull it when I go sprint. Right. So it's about you know being able to take these practices of flexibility and turn them into mobility right. so it becomes functional in life. So I always start with an assessment within my mobility method because Unless we don't, unless we learn what is restricted, we don't know what to do. Right. Right. One of them is, can you touch? So standing here without letting your shoulders run forward or anything, can you touch your chin fully to your chest? We get almost. Yeah. <laughs> I got the pretty good. <laughs> fail. <laughs> Epic fail. Okay, let's see another one for you. Can you turn your head to the side and then touch your chin to your collarbone? without lifting your shoulder. Can you do it this way? Sorry. Well, let's try. Yeah, pretty good. Almost there. Just a little bit of space here. I don't feel any space, I'm just kidding. <laughs> when I first came out with the mobility method, I didn't even have a neck module because I think neck is a lot related to the upper back restriction. So once you free up the upper back, you can actually yeah. free up the neck a lot. Um, but I do, we'll go through a couple exercises. You'll probably be good for these ones. She, so she's pretty good, so she probably doesn't need these <laughs> neck ones. Perfect. Okay. Next, uh, let's just go through a quick shoulder one. So with each arm, can you touch your opposite shoulder blade without walking your hand up? Ooh. Oh, hold on. There you go. There you go. The other one's going to be really bad. Okay, though. let's see the other one. There you go. You guys should turn around so the camera can see you. That's not good. Ooh, that's fancy. <laughs> All right, let me see the other one again. So definitely your right one's a little bit more restrictive. Right. For life, a lot of times we tend to shift into the right side. Super normal. And also our insides are not symmetrical, right? right. Nothing is symmetrical on the inside. Why do we expect the outside to be? So I always say it's okay. People come to me all the time. I have scoliosis. I'm like, oh, me too. Like it's, that's a normal yeah. thing. Why do we expect the outside to be completely symmetrical if the inside is not. Yeah. But also on the right side you have your liver, which is quite large, and could restrict some of the diaphragm movement. Could. I'm not saying it does, but it could on that right side. That's so if you become one. become restricted down into your right side, it actually can pull onto that shoulder. And then if you're standing only on your right side, you're dropping in with your left foot, you're then putting more tension, shoulders falling forward, you're not gonna have as much range of motion. Alright, So Getting these feet to work better, plays all the way up, and then getting your breath to work better, getting your upper chest to work better, can then start to release the shoulder. This one's really easy, or let's lay down on the floor. This way. So, grab one leg and put your shin parallel to the ground. Now you're just gonna go into, or external rotation is getting your foot to come in as much as you can. You should have about 45 degrees. So extend to straight. So yours is 100% limited. So put that foot in this. Wow. <laughs> Try to fail. 
One hundred percent. Do you see how much that's that's really not forty five degrees? Forty five degrees yeah, should be like over I'm here. I'm very restricted. You're a little restricted, not too bad. Okay, now go the opposite way. You should have. Ooh, that's pretty good. Look at you, internal rotation. I practiced this one. Look at you. You got you got pretty good internal rotation too. So not you. I mean. Some things say 35 to 45 degrees of internal rotation. Probably about 30 degrees of internal rotation is going to be quite normal. But you guys are both kind of restricted for external rotation. Yeah. And the reason we want that rotation to be in the hip is because if you're limited in one direction of the hip, going into the squat, your, your femur inside the acetabulum, it rotates and moves in different directions. So if you're limited in one direction, it's going to start pinching yeah. in one of the glides. That's how you get impingement syndrome. That's how you get that, that hip pain in the front where everyone's like, I need to stretch my, my hip flexors. And I'm yeah. like, cool. And you need to see what's happening right. with your rotation, which is something that I think a lot of people uh, forget about. Now, last one, we'll just go down to the ankle. This is a really easy assessment. The thing is, you don't want your hip to pop out to the side, so you want to keep your hip in line with your femur and then see keeping your heel down. Can you get your, I usually do this like uh, um, into a wall or something. So you want to see, can you get your knee past your toes about four to five inches? Not bad. Pretty good. Wait All right. The other one. Let's I gave you the, the good other one, one first. Wait till the other one. I gave you the good one first and that oh, one doesn't go. No. <laughs> These assessments kill you. Yeah, that one's quite, do you feel the restriction on that side? No. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, so getting, so it's really easy to kind of, easier to see if you do it into a wall, because yeah. then you can try to touch the knee to the wall, start with the toe at least four to five inches away, try to touch your knee to the wall and see if your heel pops up. Really quick, easy assessment to kind of see what's happening there. And your knees should shift over your yeah. toes when you get to the bottom of a squat. So if we're if we're talking, you know, like you were saying, your bottom needs to drop below parallel, then your knees should be shifting forward. And if you don't have the ankle mobility, you're going to be stuck. But how, when you see these assessments, and maybe I'm restricted here, but what about the people that are going way too far? Right. And, and don't have the other direction, yeah. though. Yeah. So the other direction then plays a role, too. Yeah. And that's what I was kind of saying. So it's like, if you're hunched here, well, your body lays on a spectrum. So it's not going to be fully hunched, you know? You're not going to be all the way in a forward position with your head to the ground. So you're going to be on more of the hunched over here. Yeah. So instead of just trying to force it over here, we say, how can we find this middle point again is by pushing into the hunch, pushing out, pushing in, yeah. pushing out, pushing in, pushing out. So eventually we start to get both directions happening. Yeah. So when you're at rest, your body is at rest. Every time you do this, I feel myself practicing <laughs> with you. I love that. Is that all right? Yeah, please do and that. And so as soon as you line it up, Oh, so for me or for anybody else, how do you slowly get your body to be feeling safe is by doing both movements, both movements. rather than just one. Rather, yes. oh my gosh, I need to sit like this. Exactly. So you're, so what's how would somebody go about kind of fixing that? Like what's the what's the ratio for both? Is just moving into it. Yeah. So then, so say I'll I'll take one into the upper back. So yeah. say we want to get into the upper back. Um, just flipping over your cat cow and sitting onto your bottom now. Doc Jen Fit learned all things mobility, breathing, small tweaks that I'm going to implement into my daily activities and my daily overall routine to help my lifestyle and all things movement. I'm super excited to share the information with you. As always, I am drinking my Organifi for my quick on the go nutrition 
and don't forget to check them out for 20% off at Organifi.com backslash proof and our own website which is proof-fitness.com where we have a free downloadable ebook with a macro calculator as well as my favorite smoothie recipe which I hope you enjoy. So we will see you next time.